Thank you to the entire team of CII. I know I'm standing between you and your lunch, so I'll try and keep this as brief as I can. Firstly, my apologies uh, for showing up late almost by half an hour, 40 minutes. It was because of uh, Vagesh Dikshit, who had actually... Vagesh, I'm blaming you. Um, because it's, he had set up multiple meetings before this event, so therefore I'm delayed. It's purely because of the CIA chairman, not my fault. And secondly, now, Vagesh, I know your trick, how to fill the room. Awards, itne zade de do ki room bhar jayega aur overflow ho jayega aur sabhi log a jayenge. Main soch raha tha, mere ko sunne ke liye log aaye yahan pe, but abhi lag raha hai ki award lene aaye to. But thank you anyways, Vagesh, for making me feel good. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Suchitra Garu, uh, for flying in from Bangalore. I have to remind you that uh, this is your base, Bharat is here, so you should not go to Bangalore and Vizag very often, you should stay here more often, and do more business, write more checks, continue to expand, continue to create more vaccines, continue to consolidate our position as the vaccine capital of the world. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely, uh, very, very, very often. And thank you for writing a check yesterday as well, Jalachari was there, uh, you know, for the Sanya Mirza uh, farewell exhibition uh, match, thank you very much for that as well. Jayesh, the other Jayesh. Thank you, Jayesh. Um, we have uh, my principal secretary, Jayesh Ranjan, the incoming chairman, Shekhar Redigaru, and of course our visitor, guest from uh, Kerala, who, was, uh, uh, who I dragged on incidentally. Because, you know, he was telling me some very interesting things, so I thought you all should hear from, uh, you know, a gentleman who's investing in our state, a gentleman who values our state, and who's been doing tremendous things and uh, creating tremendous employment opportunities in our state as well. So thank you, Sabu Jacob Garu, for all the kind words you had and for all the nice things you've said about our state, the investment situation, etc. here. And to all the award winners, congratulations. Those who haven't win, won the awards, still, uh, congratulations to you as well, because I'm sure there is plenty that Vagish has, uh, who, which he will be sharing with you in days to come. Since this is my um, last meeting before this election, uh, before the next general election, that is, the last CII annual meeting. Let me also do my fiduciary responsibility and ask you to vote me back to power and ensure that we come back as a government uh, in 2023. I'm guessing, I'm guessing by the applause that I'll come back, so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, quickly, I'll just... Um, I, ha I do have a written speech, Vagish, but uh, I won't go much in Yes, quickly, I'm sure you've been following what all has been happening in Telangana in the last uh, few weeks, few months, couple of months, in fact, and some very, very interesting and exciting things happening. We just concluded uh, BioAsia, which is uh, Asia's, one of Asia's largest premier events, and some very exciting things have unfolded there. In fact, um, back in 21, 2021, in the midst of the pandemic, we had conducted BioAsia in a virtual mode. And we made a commitment to ourselves that the current ecosystem valuation back then, 2021, of life sciences industry in Telangana and Hyderabad, and Telangana, not Hyderabad alone, but Telangana, was about $50 billion, and we'll double it by 2030, was what the ambition that we had set for ourselves. But, you know, what happened sometimes, you know, is, is, is really good. Uh, from $50 billion in 2020, we actually went to two, 80 billion in 2022. So a 30 billion increase in just about two, two, two and a half years, which was a huge surprise for us as well. Because I think after the pandemic, the world has realized that we need to invest more in healthcare, we need to invest more in life sciences, we need to ensure that this brilliant industry which saves lives needs to be focused on. So therefore, governments across the world, I think uh, institutions across the world, individuals across the world have started investing more and more in life sciences and therefore, the valuation just jumped from 50 to 80 billion in a span of two and a half years. So we had the good problem, good challenge of resetting our target. Because, you know, the 100 billion dar target that we had set for ourselves by 2030, we are now going to be shooting it through five years ahead of schedule. So therefore, we said, okay, now let's actually challenge ourselves more. Let's do a revised target. Now, what we've come out with is to ensure that this 80 billion industry today becomes a 250 billion industry by 2030. It's audacious. It's audacious, it's bold, it's ambitious, but I think it's imminently doable. The reason why I say this is because today Hyderabad and Telangana have so many strengths 
that we can consolidate, that we can build on and that we can continue to leverage on. One of the things I will tell you is of course the vaccine industry and how Hyderabad today is the vaccine capital of the world. 35% of world vaccines are produced from Hyderabad. In fact, 9 billion doses are produced from Hyderabad. And come next year, with all the expansion happening in the city, with Bharat, with Biologically, with Sanofi, with Indian Immunologicals and others. In fact, Serum is now setting up a center of excellence here. So all of this combined will take us to almost 14 billion doses by hopefully end of next year. But that will make it 50% of the current vaccine production of the globe coming from one single location, that is Hyderabad and Telangana, which is a huge, huge <laughs> matter of uh, pride, matter of happiness to all of us. But how do we consolidate this? We produce 35% of global vaccines. We produce 40% of Indian pharmaceuticals. We also have the largest number of US FDA approved manufacturing facilities, pharma manufacturing facilities in the world for any single province. We have 214 units in Hyderabad and Telangana. The second largest number is actually in New Jersey, 189. So we have the largest number of US FDA approved facilities for any single province or a single state in the world. Also, with the blessings of our Honorable Chief Minister, we had launched the Telangana Medical Devices Park in Sultanpur uh, in Patancharu. Now that has shaped up really well. We have more than 50 units running already. We have 30 more which will be unveiled soon. And we already have the world's largest stent manufacturing facility in a single location in our medical devices park. Now this is the brilliant story of life sciences in Hyderabad. We have across the spectrum of life sciences, we have various activities. Now we need to consolidate and we need to play to our strengths and we need to also of course start looking at newer opportunities. So therefore we have now, as you all know, we've been talking about it for a while, Hyderabad Pharma City, which will be again the world's largest pharma cluster, single pharma cluster that is also on the anvil. In fact, we are in the last leg of, uh, you know, the court cases, etc. Now it's reserved for judgment. I'm hopeful that it will come through soon. We'll attract more than $8 billion of investment. We'll create more than 500,000 jobs in the single pharma cluster. We'll add to the valuation, we'll add to number of uh, plans that we have with respect to pharma sector. Also, we are expanding Genome Valley. We are also expanding Medical Devices Park. The demand is more than the supply right now, in fact. And um, I think uh, each and every time I visit Genome Valley, each and every time I visit the Medical Devices Park, I only come back more energized and more enthused about the possibilities, about the future, about the growth opportunities, and about how Hyderabad and Telangana can continue to create opportunities for the rest of India and the rest of the globe as well. I'm very confident that life sciences ecosystem and its valuation and the targets that we have set for ourselves of $250 billion by 2030 is imminently doable, provided, of course, I'm elected back and provided I'm running the state and I continue to run the state as well. Not only life sciences, jokes apart, not only life sciences, we also have several other strengths, several other strong areas. Technology, as you all know, is again a very strong suit of Telangana. Today, Hyderabad and Telangana can boast of some of the strongest names in technology in the world. You know, just, before I, just before I came into this room, I was talking to a UK-based company called Deliveroo. They're like the Swiggy and Zomato version who operate in 10 plus countries across the world. They have a tech development center here. It started last year. And they were telling me how swiftly they were growing in Telangana. Not only do we have the startups, we just had uh, two or three startups, you know, who were all awarded here. Marut, Drones, Prem, Bharat and uh, Pavan from Skyroo, the entire team of Dhruva Space. These guys are charting, you know, the new unknown territories. In fact, nobody ever thought space tech in India would be a sector that would be talking about with optimism. But today, we have two Hyderabad startups, Skyroot, which sent the first private, you know, rocket into space in first attempt successfully. I think they deserve a huge round of applause. Guys, if you can please stand up for a minute. Bharat and uh, Pavan, did they leave the room or? They left the room, okay. So they're a T-Hub incubator and uh, they have done really well. In, even Elon Musk, by comparison, just to draw a sim quick, simple comparison. Even Elon Musk and his company SpaceX had to make three attempts to send a ro rocket uh, successfully into the orbit. But they have done it in their first attempt. The second company I'd like to acknowledge is, of course, Dhruva. Are you guys here? Okay, these boys, please stand up. 
these four guys just after a week just after a week uh, you know uh, after skyroot had done the rocket launch these guys have sent nano satellites through a thibault mission into the orbit as well please give them a big big round of applause so these are the new guys these are, these are the new guys these are the these are the change agents as i call them who are giving me hope where is prem of marut is he here if he is here prem again is redefining the whole drone space in fact he was instrumental in working with us in launching a very unique project prem that is prem by the way prem from marut drones he was instrumental in launching a wonderful project called as medicine from the sky when we delivered we were the first state in india to partner with the world economic forum to partner with apollo hospitals to deliver medicines and vaccines from hyderabad vikarabad to remote areas to remote phcs and other locations now these are some cutting edge cool technologies that are going to redefine the landscape as far as we can see in india so information technology and the technology prowess of hyderabad you know we have some of the largest companies in the world whose largest bases are here amazon's world's largest base is in hyderabad largest campus is in hyderabad not in seattle google apple meta um microsoft of course and uh, you know uh, salesforce uber micron qualcomm all of these companies their second largest bases in the world outside of their headquarters is right here in fact we have more than a million people working directly in technology from hyderabad now what does this do on the one hand we have strong presence in life sciences where we have more than 450000 people working in the life sciences area and we have technology where we have more than a million people working right here in hyderabad we all know how pervasive technology is in today's world because technology is literally not left any sphere of life untouched we live in a world you know where devices talk to each other we live in a world of interconnected devices the day is not very far for those of us who are over 40 and over you know into the middle age let me tell you the day is not far when your phone is going to give a command to your car which will in turn talk to your refrigerator which will also in turn talk to your doctor you know daughter or son which will also in turn talk to your you know a uh, stereo and make sure that everything is synchronized and you move in a in a seamless fashion the day is not far might sound a bit far fetched it might sound a bit like a science fiction movie but the day is not far why am i bringing that up technology has become so pervasive that even pharmaceutical industry even life sciences industry is not exempt from the pervasiveness of technology so we have novartis in hyderabad who employs 9000 plus people who is actually only doing out of which only 400 500 people are doing pure play research and development in a laboratory the remaining people that are working for novartis are engaged in digital drug discovery are working as biostatisticians are engaged in biomedical engineering are engaged in biomedical innovation technology therefore is going to be that beautiful point of confluence for other spheres of life if you could be a manufacturer we have schneider here in hyderabad whose factory has been rated as one of the best lighthouses in the world in terms of smart manufacturing facilities for their factories across the world and now schneider is a global company but their factory here has been rated as one among the best in the world in terms of leveraging technology and bringing in practices with respect to industry 4.0 so that is the sort of pervasiveness of technology i am trying to bring up to your notice i keep saying this and i can't say it enough hyderabad is that place where biology meets technology where life sciences meets data sciences where mangoverse meets metaverse where paratha meets dosa where idli meets dhokla the reason why i say this is because india needs economic engines like hyderabad to continue to attract talent from across the country and across the world we cannot make do with what we have alone of course we want our youngsters to get lion share of the jobs but we also need to understand and emphasize that we need talent no matter where it is from see some of our youngsters from telangana and andhra are living in the us are living elsewhere in the world if they want to come back and set up shop here they want to come back 
and give their learnings and give their knowledge, impart their knowledge and create enterprises here, would we not welcome them? So exactly, you, you have talented individuals across the country in India today who we would want to attract. In fact, the point of confluence, technology plus other spheres of life, as I was pointing out, has become so pervasive that today if you look at the world order, the largest book seller in the world does not own a bookstore. The largest transporter in the world does not own a single vehicle. And the list goes on. Uber, Amazon, neither of them actually are, have any physical assets in terms of the business they actually are engaged in. So what we need to understand is how paradigms are being redefined, how new business opportunities are emerging. So therefore, Telangana government, understanding this fully and wanting to leverage sustainable mobility, the electric vehicle revolution that's unfolding, we have now launched the Telangana Mobility Valley. Because we understand the automobile of the past, automobile of the past was all about design, was all about how robust it should be, how reliable it should be, etc. But the automobile of today, the electric vehicle that we all have taken a fancy to, is nothing but a computer on wheels. It's largely, largely technology and electronics in the machine and very little hardware if you ask me. So therefore, this Telangana Mobility Valley that we have launched in four different clusters around Hyderabad, manufacturing in Zahirabad, I am thankful to Mahindra and Mahindra, who have recently announced a thousand crore investment. I am thankful that they would be manufacturing electric autos, the three-wheelers from there. It's one of their largest growing segments. Likewise, I am also thankful to Amar Raja Batteries, who is now setting up one of their largest investments, 10,000 crores almost, in Divitipalli, in Mahbub Nagar. And I am also thankful to several other operators who have signed on to create this vibrant mobility valley. What Genome Valley has done to the life sciences industry, I am pretty confident that the mobility valley will do to the sustainable mobility industry and Hyderabad will become the nucleus in India of this specific industry which has an immense potential in the decades to come, in the years to come. I'm very confident and those of you who are looking at, in fact, I met several entrepreneurs now, who are battery makers, charging infrastructure makers, etc., etc., and even lithium ion, uh, you know, cell manufacturers, etc. I look forward to working with you, look forward to engaging with you and bringing more and more investment to Hyderabad. Now, another important sector that has done rather well in Hyderabad is aerospace and defense. We're very proud of the accomplishments of the aerospace and defense industry in Hyderabad. Look forward to consolidating more and more on that because this is again a very exciting uh, time to be a defense or aerospace player because lots of new things are happening, lots of exciting things are happening, lots of joint ventures are happening. The world cannot do without Indian talent, without a question, because India is getting younger and younger, the world is getting older. Our median age is 27. 65% of India is less than the age of 35. So the Indian talent, which is now received a resounding endorsement from across the world is something that we want to latch on to. We want to continue to build knowledge economy and as part of that, in fact, uh, aerospace and defense industry is something that I am looking forward to with a great deal of optimism. But of course, going back to what Mr. Jacob said, he asked me the very first time we met, he said, do you want investment or employment? What, do, what is your focus? Of course, I said, I need employment because, as I said, we have a lot of youngsters. Every year we have hundreds of thousands of graduates coming out of our education system. Now government can only gainfully employ so many directly. What is the task at hand? What is the biggest challenge every government across the world has? It is the task of people management. It is the task of how do you manage this human capital, the so-called demographic dividend that is there for us, you know, that is up for grabs. So every government across the world, not just India, needs to start looking at, needs to start assessing and looking at the kind of human resources we have at our disposal and create more and more opportunities. So when Mr. Jacob told me that he is, Kitex is, the second largest kids apparel manufacturer in the world, of course I didn't want to let him go. I said, I'll send you a flight, please come. And then he actually came in and he not only chose to invest 3,000 crores, more importantly, 
is creating 28,000 jobs for Telangana. I think he deserves a huge round of applause. I am very hopeful that with taking his lead, taking his inspiration, more and more garment manufacturers come our way. Because there are some things which are hidden, some facets of Telangana which have not been explored yet. Recently I met um, uh, you know, a gentleman called Senthil who is uh, from Southern India Mills Association. He was telling me that the quality of cotton produced in Telangana, the long staple cotton that is produced, said your cotton quality is far superior to what we use in Tamil Nadu, what we use in Gujarat and what we use elsewhere in the country. Now this is something that has not been explored. But all he said was, you need to purify it, you need to brand it, you need to market it so that more and more garment manufacturers, more and more textile manufacturers come here. Now this is a huge employment generating opportunity. We have already launched Kakatiya Mega Textile Park where Kitex is the anchor. It is India's largest textile park in about 1250 acres. Not only do we have Kitex, we already have a unit running by Ganesha Ecosphere. We also have Young One, a Korean company who's also taken 300 acres of land, who's also going to start you know, construction very, very soon. Now this park alone will create hundreds of thousands of, jo thousands of jobs. Similarly, we have ambitions to create smaller clusters of opportunity in garmenting and textiles. More importantly, electronics, another very, very exciting area. You may have seen the announcement recently, last week in fact. We had unveiled India's largest prototyping facility uh, called as T-Works because we want to encourage product innovation coming out of Hyderabad, product innovation coming out of Telangana. The chairman of Foxconn was here. He had unveiled T-Works. He had a great meeting with our chief minister. He has again, because there was some confusion with respect to what was said and what was agreed upon, so he issued a rejoinder yesterday, a renewed uh, uh, you know, commitment yesterday, saying, I'm committed to investing in Telangana, and we have chosen Kongar Kalan, the 200 plus acres of land in Kongar Kalan, to set up our manufacturing facility. I'm very, very hopeful that with Foxconn and other electronic manufacturers coming in, not only will the local ecosystem get a huge boost, but it will create great many opportunities for Telangana youngsters going forward as well. But I can't close out without talking about what is happening in the rural area in Telangana as well. Under the leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, we have completed, in a span of 36 to 40 months, we have completed the world's largest lift irrigation project called as Kaleshwaram. Those of you who have a doubt, those of you who have a doubt, you can Google it, you can just type world's largest lift irrigation project, you would see Kaleshwaram. We are literally lifting water from about 82 meters above sea level, pumping it all the way through a multi-stage lift irrigation project, multi-stage lifting system, to 618 meters near Hyderabad at Konda Pochamma Sagar in Gajuel. Now from there, of course, Hyderabad is at 535 meters. This project not only provides irrigation potential to 45 lakh acres of land, it also provides drinking water to Hyderabad and also most of the districts en route. And most importantly, it also gives you potential to industrialize. 10% of the water is also earmarked for industrial consumption. Why am I bringing this up? Because when water is in abundance, through Mission Kakatiya to the various projects that we have completed, five new revolutions are unfolding in Telangana as we speak. Now, what are these five revolutions? The first one, of course, is the Green Revolution. Telangana today is competing with the likes of Punjab and Haryana in terms of our paddy production, in terms of our ability to come out with world-class food products and agriculture products. I'm thankful to ITC, who set up a large unit in Tupran with more than 1,000 crores of investment. But I'm looking forward to working more and more with you, the rest of you, in who, who are interested in setting up agri or agri-based industries, food or food-related industries in Telangana. Because we have a problem of plenty now with respect to water, agriculture produce, and what we can do with it. We, of course, are self-sufficient. We would want to ensure that most of this is exported, and we want to continue to unfold these revolutions and latch on to these revolutions. The first is a green revolution. The second one I'll talk about is a blue revolution. Telangana today, because, you know, before the formation of the state, when somebody used to talk about aqua, we used to think about Godavari districts, Bhimavaram and thereabouts. But today, Telangana is the number one state in India for inland fisheries. Because of all the rejuvenation that has happened in the lakes and tanks, 46,000 lakes and tanks in Telangana, 
through Mission Kakatiya and because of all the new reservoirs that have been built as part of Kaleshwaram, as part of other irrigation projects, we have become the number one state today in India for inland fisheries. Now what does this do? Today my district Sirsila, Rajana Sirsila has become a hub for aqua based industries. Now we have companies such as Fission, uh, CP Foods, which is a Thai based company, Fission is an American company, who are wanting to come there and set up cage culture and culture tilapia fish, export 100% to the United States. Now these are opportunities again, which I also want you to kindly explore, because we have fantastic fiscal incentives, we have the ability to customize packages for you, please explore these as well. The third revolution that's unfolding in Telangana, besides the green and blue, is pink revolution. Pink revolution is not that of my political party, but of course that also is true. Pink revolution is the meat processing industry that's flourishing in Telangana. Because of the improvement in the number of livestock, because of a program that we have taken called as a sheep rearing. You know, our chief minister says something very interesting. Whenever we talk about skill development, whenever we go tell him, Sir, uh, you know, we have this brilliant new initiative of skill development. He says, he asks rather, you know, skill development is good, but what about the already acquired skill that we have in our population? We have people who can rear sheep, we, because we have people who can weave beautiful fabrics, we have people who can do magic, you know, because that is what they've learned over the years. What about them, the brilliant craftsmen that we have? So what has happened in Telangana because of the sheep rearing program is our livestock has doubled again. We are now one of the largest meat producers in the country and this gives us opportunity also to create meat processing potential not just for Telangana, Andhra but also for the rest of the country and also possibly for international markets. The fourth revolution that's unfolding also is white revolution, dairy revolution. In Telangana, you know, when we started our journey eight and a half years ago, our state-owned dairy, Vijaya Dairy was in losses. But today, Vijaya Dairy has turned around. It is actually giving a dividend back to the state. Not only Vijaya Dairy, we also have Karim Nagar Dairy. We have Mother Dairy in Nalgonda and Rangareddy. All of them are thriving. And therefore, you see a white revolution unfolding. And please don't underestimate the white revolution. I know of a company called New Zealand Milk Products, NZMP, from my working days back 23 years ago. This one company, which was earlier called Fonterra, or probably now called Fonterra, one company alone in New Zealand contributes to 8% of GDP of New Zealand as a country. So the opportunity to do more in dairy and dairy processing uh, is something that you cannot undermine, you cannot underestimate. I would urge you to look at this opportunity as well. And the last one, the last revolution, the fifth revolution, that's also unfolding in Telangana. India is hugely reliant on imports for edible oils. And we want to change that. We have set on our, ourselves an ambitious target of 20 lakh acres under cultivation for palm oil. Oil palm revolution is typically called the yellow revolution. Now this yellow revolution is also unfolding in Telangana. We are offering tailor-made incentives to those farmers who are wanting to get into this field. We are also offering incentives to those who want to come forward and set up oil palm factories in Telangana. So with these five revolutions, green, blue, pink, white and yellow. Telangana's rural hinterland is also going to see an explosion of industrialization and I urge all of you promising entrepreneurs, settled entrepreneurs and enterprises in this room, industrialists in this room, to start looking at opportunities in the hinterland as well. Of course, life sciences is exciting, technology is exciting, electronics, textiles, garments is exciting, aerospace is equally exciting, logistics, education, there's a number of other fields which are exciting. But I think these five revolutions together between them have the potential to create opportunities for millions and millions of youngsters. And to harness all these five rural revolutions like I just mentioned, Telangana is also creating special food processing zones. Like how we have ITSEZs in Hyderabad. We are creating special food processing zones with customized incentives. So those of you who are interested, I remember a day when I was a kid in uh, school, when Hyderabad was the nutraceuticals capital of the country. I remember that we had an excursion for one time. We had to sit in the bus, maybe we had to cut it or something else. Or it was up, I don't remember. We had to Ampro Biscuit Factory. I don't know if Ampro is or not, I don't remember. We went there and we had a whole 
वो बिस्किट वाला खुशबू आने लगा अच्छा लगा आज कहीं वो खुशबू नहीं मिलती है तो माय पॉइंट इज वी हैड आर स्ट्रेंथ वी हैड आर यू नो प्रेजेंस इन न्यूट्रोस्यूटिकल्स इन अ बिग वे वी नीड टू फाइंड इट अगेन वी नीड टू स्टार्ट लैचिंग ऑन टू दोज अपॉर्चुनिटीज इज वेल द लास्ट थिंग आई एल से कोर्स इट्स ईजी टू क्रिटिसाइज इट्स ईजी टू से लॉर थिंग्स इंडिया एज अ कंट्री India as a country needs to prosper needs to grow but if it needs to grow then union government also needs to start looking at performing states looking at states that are doing well encouraging them because ultimately india is a union of states india as defined by the constitution by the way this is not my definition is a union of states and a federal republic unless we play to our strengths unless we empower our states unless we incentivize performing states and also encourage non performing states we would be doing a great disservice to the ambition that we have for ourselves you know it's all good to give beautiful slogans make in india is a good slogan but has it translated into reality i had a meeting with the all india medical devices association as part of the bio asia program the gentleman who heads ai med his name is dr rajiv nath he told me sir we had 1200 units in the past now 600 have shut down we only have 600 we need to ask ourselves some hard questions we need to introspect we need to start asking questions such as why is it easy for us to manufacture in china import it thousands of kilometers still sell them cheaper than our manufacturing uh, you know than locally manufactured goods we need to have common sensical answers to that what about our duty structures what about the availability of raw material what about our illogical you know uh, uh, conditions that we not conditions but in fact road blocks that we put in the way of our entrepreneurs prospering and competing with the rest of the world my humble request through this forum to all the industry here to the people who have the ears and uh, you know the uh, you know to the the who have the ability to get an audience with prime minister and others please tell them that there are states that are doing well and if only the rest of india can possibly also do equally well we would have already been a 5 trillion economy if the rest of india actually did as well as telangana did i'll back it up with numbers started our journey in 2014 our per capita was 1 lakh 24000 rupees today our per capita is 3 lakh 17000 rupees our gross state domestic product back in 2014 was 5 lakh 6000 crores today it is 13 lakh 27000 crores on both these counts we have risen we have risen we have uh, we have enhanced by 155 and 162% the rest of india unfortunately did not do as well as we did if only if only the rest of india did as well we certainly would have reached the ambition of 5 trillion target in 2022 itself unfortunately even though we are a performing state we are penalized hyderabad pharma city which will be the world's largest pharma cluster will not receive support from the government of india Kakatiya Mega Textile Park which is the largest park in India for textiles has zero support from government of India we will not receive new manufacturing clusters for electronics we do not receive you know we were promised in the act Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act that industrial corridors would be promoted special incentives would be given for industrialization in the state of Telangana and Andhra i speak for both states unfortunately they have not materialized in 9 years we need to ask these questions we need to say what was promised as part of the legislature as part of an enactment as part of a statute if that is not honored then where is the sanctity of calling ourselves the world's largest democracy if we in the abode of democracy in the temple of democracy the promises made are not kept what is the sanctity of these institution then i'm i'm asking a very serious question my humble request to government of india is we may not be affiliated with you politically that's the beauty of democracy not everybody is going to like you i mean i'm sure there are a lot of people in this room who don't like me fine so be it but the point is beauty of democracy is divergence of opinion divergence of our country diversity of our country the heterogeneity of this brilliant country aap kon hote ho decide karne wale ki kisko kya pehanna chahiye kisko kya khana chahiye kisko kya bolna chahiye ye kahan ki reet hai all i'm saying is if you understand that india is a union of states and if stronger the state stronger the country then encourage and patters incentivize performing states moving forward only then we'll see india 
as a first world country. Thank you very much. Jai Telangana, Jai Hind.